So I'm delighted to be here. Thanks for having me out and giving me the chance to talk to you. So let's start off. We're going to talk about road tolls. Before we get there, let's just be clear. You know, cars are awesome, right? Like, cars are great. A lot of the standard of life we have in Canada and the U.S. is because cars let us spread out a little bit more. We don't have to walk everywhere. So cars are great, but you know the worst thing about driving? It's the other drivers, right? It's the other people in your way. And cars create a problem, which is congestion. This congestion has huge social costs. You take the typical urban driver, so this is someone in a city like Toronto or New York or Chicago, they're going to spend over 52 hours a year stuck in traffic, and this is the extra time due to congestion. Not just, you know, of course it takes time to go from A to B. What is the extra time it takes? All this extra time spent in traffic creates lots of extra pollution. This extra pollution is especially damaging because it takes place right where we live. And because of this, it creates massive health impacts on kids. You can see, you look at like schools near major roads, students do worse. You look at hospitals near major roads, the babies in those hospitals do worse, right? There's major health impacts because we have lots of congestion right in our cities. So why is this a problem, right? Like, why is it that we get to argue that there's too much congestion, right? I don't get to come and complain to you, hey man, the cost of an Xbox, it's too high, right? I don't get to say that because we're like, oh, you know, it's a competitive marketplace. Sure, you want to buy an Xbox, you have to give something up. Maybe that's what's going on with roads. You want to get around, you got to give something up. So why is it that I get to get up here and tell you there's too much congestion? Well, the problem with traffic congestion is that when you and I get on the road, we don't bear the full cost of that trip. Because we're not paying the full cost, we buy more trips than we would otherwise if we had to pay that full cost. You know, putting that back to the Xbox example, you know, if the government were to like pay half the cost of every Xbox, you might find that we have one in every room of our house. And maybe we'd argue that's not the socially optimal number of Xboxes. So let's just walk through an example, which is should I, you know, I'm going to go to the movies tonight. Should I drive or should I take transit? And I walk through my, this with my students every year and I say, all right, what would you think about when you're trying to choose whether you should drive or take transit? So what are some things you think about? Well, you ask my students, they see things like, well, how much time does driving save me? If it's going to be a little bit faster, might want to drive instead of taking transit. You know, what about parking, like we were just talking about? If parking is going to be a real pain near the movie theater, maybe that's a reason to prefer transit. Uh, they talk about, you know, what's the transit schedule? Am I going to have to walk really far? Does it drop me off where I want to go? How comfortable is my car versus taking public transit? How crowded is it going to be? Or you can imagine going on and on about the things you would think about and deciding how to get somewhere. You know what no one ever mentions? They say, you know, a reason I don't want to drive is I'm worried I might slow down other drivers. Like, we just don't think about it. We don't talk about it. We don't talk about the cost we impose on others when we get on the road. So the question is, is this matter? Like, is it a big cost or a little cost? Well, if you're driving in a city like Toronto, it would not be at all hard for you to slow down 900 other cars. And maybe you slow them down just a little bit. Just one second each. Like, ah, what's the big deal? One second each? A small cost I've imposed. Well... You've imposed this cost on 900 other people. You add that up, that's an additional cost of 15 minutes. And you might imagine there's a lot of people making the choice of driving or taking transit. You say, you know what, driving saves me 10 minutes, so I'll drive. All right, I make this choice all the time, right? But when we add up all these other costs, the cost of you slowing down other people down, the cost of the pollution, it ends up that person really should be taking public transit. And now you might say, wait, I'm the kind of person where driving saves me 30 minutes or 45 minutes. All right, there are, those people exist. There's lots of them where driving just makes more sense. The difference is if we, if we can get people to make the right choice, that means these other drivers are out of your way so that you're able to get to work or the movie theater or wherever you're trying to go a little bit more quickly. So what should we do about it? Well, we need drivers to consider the full social cost of their trip. One way you could do that is you could just ask people nicely. Just say, please, when you drive, will you remember you might slow other people down? I got a tip for you. It's not going to work, all right? It's like asking my kids to clean their rooms. I can ask them and ask them, and until I tell them if your room's not clean tonight, you're not going to play video games, you know, it's not going to happen. So what we need to do is we need to charge a toll that equals that additional social cost. We're going to say, hey, if you want to drive right during rush hour, you're going to add 15 to 30 minutes of uh, travel time to other drivers. And we're going to ask you to pay for that. You're going to pay for that cost. 
This goes by a lot of names. It's often called congestion pricing. And to be clear, right, the amount you slow down other people depends on the road you're on, on the time of day. So this toll shouldn't just be the same all day long. If you want to drive at 2 in the morning, the toll should be incredibly low just to pay for like the wear and tear on the road or something. If you want to drive right during rush hour, that toll would be a lot higher. This toll would make life a lot better in a lot of different ways because it affects people's choices on a number of different dimensions. So if we had a toll, it would change your choices of whether to travel. And you might say, hey, instead of going to the movie theater, I'll just watch it at home on Netflix. It makes sure it changes your choice of where you want to travel. You might say, hey, instead of going to the movie theater downtown at Young Dundas Square or somewhere else, maybe I'll go to the suburban one where I'm not going to cause as much extra traffic. It chose, changes your choice of how to get there. So that's mode choice. That's this example of driving versus public transit. Changes your choice of which route to take whether to travel right during rush hour or to change your trips, you're going earlier or later. And maybe kind of the granddaddy of them all, the biggest thing, is actually going to change the way our cities look. Just like we've been talking about with parking and other things, how doing that would change the way our cities look. Adding congestion pricing or road tolls would likewise change the way our cities look. Now, of course, there's a problem with adding these tolls. You know, economists have been talking about this for 99 years. And as of yet, you only see it in a few places. Why? Well, most people think these tolls are going to make them worse off. All right, who here wants to pay more for something they're already doing? Right? We all say no. So here's some quotes. My favorite is this last one from a voter in the UK. He says, turkeys don't vote for Christmas and motorists won't vote for more taxes to drive. So what I've been working on for the past few years is saying, hey, is there some way we could design these tolls in a way that would actually make people better off? Right? Sure, you pay the toll and your travel time's a little bit better, but we want this toll to make every single driver better off. Is there a way to do that? And the answer is yes. A carefully designed toll applied to a portion of the lanes can help all road users even before you use the money. So it doesn't matter what happens with the money, we can still do this in a way that helps everyone. So let's walk through this clause by clause. First, this toll has to be carefully designed. You can't just go throw down whatever toll you want. This toll has to be time varying has to be collected electronically, right? You can't have people stopping at toll booths. And importantly, this toll is going to be set to maximize the number of people using the road. It's not going to be set to maximize profits, which is what a private company does. It's not even going to be set to maximize social welfare, some measure of what makes the world the best place. We're going to have to be trading that off in order to make everyone better off. We're going to charge this toll on only a portion of the lanes. So here's a picture of a place in Southern California where they do this, often goes by the names hot lanes or value pricing. So you take a highway, you add some sort of barrier to split it into two routes. In this case, it's pylons. You charge tolls on some of the lanes, but leaves the other lanes unpriced. Notice, of course, this has a cost and that those other lanes are still just as congested as they were before, maybe a little bit better, but you're allowing people the option, if they want, to pay with their money to save travel time. By doing this, you can make everyone better off. How is this possible? The key idea is that road, when roads are congested, they're clogged. And when roads are clogged, that means fewer vehicles are getting through. Right? So just go like, look out at the road and count how many cars are going by per unit time. And right at the worst part of rush hour, it's actually not very many. You just have a bunch of cars sitting still. We can use tolls to undo this effect. By adding these tolls, we can make the road free flowing again. This means we can get more vehicles through. Now the important part of this is that we're going to only price some of the lanes. We're going to charge a toll on only some of the lanes. The reason this matters is that in any city, there's going to be a set of people who say, you know, I'm happy to pay four or five dollars to save some travel time. Well, other people will say, hey, I don't make that much. Maybe my trip just isn't that urgent. I'd rather not pay the toll. And even if the toll is increasing highway capacity, even if it's as though we added another lane because of this, it still makes them worse off. So to protect those drivers, to preserve their ability to choose to sit in traffic in order to use the road at the rush hour instead of paying with money, we're going to leave some of the lanes free. Because of this idea, like I love the idea of road pricing, of adding tolls to roads. Doing so is important because it helps us face the true cost of our trips. And when we face the true cost, we're going to make the right choices. That's going to make the world a better place because the road will be less congested for people still on it. It's going to increase, uh, decrease the amount of pollution and lead to healthier people within our cities. Furthermore, to make this even easier to implement, what we can do is we can add these tolls to only a portion of the lanes. 
by doing that, we can, and if we set up the tools right, we can do it in a way that actually makes everyone better off, even before we use the money. Thank you very much.